What's up guys, Johnny Sunham here, and uh, we're headed out of Hillsboro Inlet right now. As you can see, we're um, just about to make our way out the channel here. And this is our home inlet, and it's a very easy inlet unless you cut through here. And I would say about every three months, somebody thinks that they could take a shortcut through here. So just know guys, if you're ever going out of Hillsboro Inlet, don't go that way. Stay in between the channel, look at the red and green markers and stay in between them when you're going out of here. But uh, we're gonna go out today, we're gonna drop some jigs, we're gonna do a little bit of micro jigging as well. I got my good buddy Christopher Doyle up there in the front. Mr. Willie Biggs here in the back, keeping it cool. And we'll see you guys out on the water. We're just a few guys that decided to pursue our passion as we hit destination fishing spots in our local waters out of Pompano Beach, Florida. We want to fill you in on what we have learned along the way. All right, guys, we're at our first spot here and we're sitting in 178 feet. Um, it's a nice spot right on the Seymour maps. Let me see if I can zoom you in there. Now you can see it. And um, here in this 178 feet, like people think that you really need that power two or power three. Really, you can do power zero, power one. You can even get away sometimes with as light as 60 gram jigs. And as a matter of fact, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm actually gonna put down some uh, lighter micro jigs. Um, I would imagine Chris and, and Will are gonna put down the one drops and use their uh, power ones or power zeros. And uh, so let's see what's on this spot. Look at that one. Oh! It's on, it's on, it's on. There we go, baby. Are you oh, he's off. Son of a biscuit. What did it feel like? It felt like a 80 pound mutton snapper. Hey, what are the chances I still have my hooks? <laughs> what are the chances, huh? Bottom. <laughs> Talk to me, baby. <laughs> that was a fun little bump. It's funny when you're out here jigging. What have we been jigging for an hour? hour plus and you don't get it no strikes and then when you do get a strike quite a surprise especially being on a power one now we've trickled into 260 feet if you all can see this is the first time getting wet with my gunmetal gray blood red accurate valiant 500 n spj jj <laughs> Read it and weep. That's a mouthful, bro. So, <laughs> yeah. So first fisk. Let's get him in. I'm on uh, one drop, 220. Locked and loaded with 30 pound Berkeley X9. Love that line. And this guy jolted me. He's out. I'm gonna guess Beneater, possibly. Nah. Wahoo! Benito. Benito? Benita. Benita. Here, let me get them around. Your line, and let's boat this fish. See it. Bonita, hitting the one drop. So, let's Can you do this by yourself? I don't know. <laughs> let me give you a hand. Yeah, mates are always helpful, especially with a soft action rod like this. This is a flippable fish, so. But a soft action tipped rod, you want to be so careful boating a fish by yourself. So I'm going to put the fish on the deck that have not gone into free spool. Put the rod, the reel in free spool. Get in a rod holder. You know? I guess we'll do a little... Take that stick out of his mouth. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. It's not worth That's it. That's coming man. from a person who has stuck a jig in his hand. I haven't done it yet, so... Uh, there it is, There's the one a drop. There's Beach Bonita on my blue, pink, one drop. Pink and blue. All right, put them down before you get a hook yeah. in your hand. <laughs> PTSD. Yeah. Trusty old pliers. Splintering your fish. De-hook the jig. Look at the colors. Yeah, on I that can guy. respect that. It's my first Bonita caught since Hunter was born, I think. So, I'm seeing everything in a new light. That's it. Oh, so. Hiya. <laughs> <laughs> nice work, Chris. I figured something had to hit that. Yeah. Oh, we 
got targets. Look at that. Man. Yeah. Oh, look okay. at Bonita, maybe? Tuna fish, baby. Come on, tuna fish. leader. Dude, you might have had a king. It was feeling like a tuna bonita. It could have swallowed the lure. The little teeth yeah. in it. Possibility. Alright, we'll try again. Yep. Alright guys, we're uh, checking the drift. Approaching our first stop here out of our home inlet, Hillsborough Inlet. But I just wanted to do a quick tip here. Something that John, Will, myself, I think a lot of people do when they're coming out for a day of jigging or they know they're going to be some jigging, do some jigging. Uh, we got one, two, three, four, five jigging setups right here in our sea suckers pasted onto our coffin cooler. And as you can see, every single one of our jigging setups has our, our top set of assist hooks already tied, terminated, anchor, anchored onto our fluorocarbon leader, our pro jigger rods have hook keepers which is super nice but uh, every single one of these rods are rocked and ready to go with our top set of hooks so all i got to do is what depth are we in what uh, what's the drift doing let me select my first jig throw my bottom hooks onto that jig and then i grab the jig and i hook it onto my top hooks which are already attached to my line and i'm ready to go it eliminates one step out of the equation coming out here and it lets me know all my setups are, are pretty much ready to rock and roll if i got to make a switch so highly recommend you figuring out how to put your top set of hooks tied to your fluoro anchored somewhere safe on your rod go out in the water ready to go Hooked up, baby. So we're we're on a long drift. Will's out. Will's got one of our bakus out there, just kind of floating around. We've been chicking for a minute, probably I would say a good 15 minutes in between hookups. But uh, I was jigging away here, got tight. We're getting few random marks on the screen as we're drifting this uh, drop off out here. Not not much structure, just a drop off. And another Amoco. A little bit bigger than the last one, guys. Another Amoco. That's it. Put him on the deck. So these... Bottom these hooks. Amocos have been pretty thick out here in Pompano Beach, even in the Keys in the past couple weeks. Um, we've been getting them but uh yeah it looks like this guy actually ate the bottom hook there uh, it's a beautiful white color very light looking color there uh, take a look at him and you can see that top dorsal fin right there nice and tall so you know it's a almaco and then they've got this distinctive line right across from their mouth to the top of their dorsal fin there. But uh, we're gonna send this guy back down. He's not what we're looking for. All right guys, we're moving out to a little bit deeper area, um, breaking out the electric, jigging reels, and then I'm switching up to a bigger one drop. Um, still using the one drop jig, but I've actually gone to the 520 green and uh christopher doyle behind me what are you getting into eee, i'm a copycat 520 green that's it 520 gold 520 will crane in the front 520 gold so um i went i chose to go with the single um assist hooks top and bottom um this is our johnny jigs assist hooks they're actually perfect for this jig and what you could see is that these hooks do not uh touch each other but they actually span the jig quite a ways almost to the middle so it's perfect for getting down deep um, there's a lot of awesome fish in this area let's see what we can pull up 
What happened, Will? Double little rosies. On the one job, baby. I thought it was getting heavier, but it's hard to tell when you're down there. Do we want? 8.30, 8.45. Could be feeling bottom pretty soon here. I got 9.40 on the bottom. 9.40 you hit bottom? Look guys, my screen's telling me how many feet down I am. There we go. And I just tapped it at 8.84. And our sonar is saying we're in 800. So you could just imagine all that scope in your line out there. That's a rosy. That's a rosy. That's a black belly rose fish. Oh, he just got a little bigger. That's it. And just like that, guys, I'm hooked up. Just like that. We're, so we're doubling up, guys. And we've got Will Crane right here in the front, hooked up. Chris is going to grab a camera and put it on Will. And here we come with the rosy. Here we go. We got a black belly oh, rose nice fish. One. That's it, man. Put him in the core. I'm going to take that one home. All right. Yep, those are tasty. On the one drop. Look at that, it looks like, the jig looks like a black belly rose yeah, fish. Right? They're, right? They're like eating he just, their own. Like he was trying to eat, <laughs> they're eating their own. That's it. Alright guys, we got color and a nice little black fish. belly ro rose fish. Yep. That's a taco. That's a taco. The meat's like shrimp, that texture. Oh, it's delicious. Absolutely delicious. And that's it right there, fellas. Black belly rose fish. Oh, we'll throw him in the ice. Oh, he's hooked up. All right, guys, we're definitely tight to something good. First ever dropping the uh, one drop in 520. And uh, I had a nice good descent. This thing gets down quick. I thumped the bottom, gave it some pulls. Our speed over ground was decent, so this is something we like to talk about. When you redrop your jig to make contact with the bottom a second time, if the current's up a little bit, the question is, am I going to feel the bottom? Starts to become problematic if you have a tougher time feeling the bottom on your redrop. If it's soft on the second time, it's likely you're not going to ever feel it on the third time. So my second time was a little mysterious and I let out way more line than um, I needed to. Uh, I knew my jig was close to the bottom, and so my line was just going out. Oh, we're pulling. Here we go. We're at about 650 here, likely on a golden tile. Um, so, so I let out an obnoxious amount of line. Now at that point, it's the belly of my line is just the current, and the belly of the line is just stripping line at an even pace. It almost feels like the jig is dropping, but it's not. The jig is on the bottom. So I knew I had enough line out and then I, I went to motion to start retrieving to basically try to get tight to my jig again. And in true fashion, when I caught up to my jig, I had the pressure of this fish on, nice. which is really, really cool. I'm rocking the Spaith Deep, which is their power one. Um, this rod is kind of built after the Grand Crew by Temple Reef. There's some good tugs. But the cool thing about the Spade Deep is it starts where the Grand Crew Power 3 stops. Grand Crew Power 3 says it maxes out at 5. If you've used it, you know you can push 6 and even a little beyond. But uh, this Power 1 Spade Deep maxes at 6. And uh, like the Grand Crew, you can go even a little beyond. So I got a 520 gram jig. It was working it beautifully. Uh, this is my second time really spending some time deep dropping with the Spade Deep. And despite not having guides and the questions of what does this line doing through the inner blank, um, it has performed really well and I've really enjoyed using it. It's very fluid, very comfortable, very powerful. So what more can you ask for? Deep color, baby. I'm ready, boys. Going manual. I'm ready. It's shiny. Chris is going in the manual. It's shiny. It definitely is shiny looking. What? Sunlight's hitting them for the first time. Okay. Never seen the sunlight. What on earth is it? We got color. Can you guys see the color down there? There he is. He looks like, that looks like a golden mud guppy, my friend. That looks like a nice one. As a matter of fact. She's a floating. She's a floating. Here we go. Get pumped, Chris. Come on, dude. All right. Come on. One drop, baby. One, one drop. One drop. Here you go. That's a fatty, bro. 
Look at this fish, guys. Oh, my word, Chris. Wow, bro. That ain't a bad one right no, there. No, that's not a bad one. <laughs> On the one drop, yeah. baby! In the mouth, And too. look at that's exactly what we yeah. wanted to happen. We yeah. wanted that hook to hit them in the mouth. That's a deep hook set. There's no chance of this fish coming. <laughs> so what do you think, bro? <laughs> yeah. Look at the, like, look how bright the gold is on that fish. I'm gonna guess 15 pounds, yeah. if I had to guess. He's yeah. definitely a yeah. beautiful gold in the end on the green one drop. You know what the sad part about this is? Oh, oh. give me a little high. He's five. about to set jigs loose. 16 pounds. I was close, dude. So 16 pounds on the bogo grip, guys. Yeah. What did I say? I said 15. Yeah, what did you say? You, I didn't say anything. You concurred with me. Yeah, you concurred. Concur. Yeah. 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 Beautiful <laughs> South Atlantic Golden Tile. What should we do, Will? You what guys go sit in the sun and I'll film you and, and you talk about and it so, and you do your That's thing. wonderful because the people want Will Crane. Don't they, they want it. They, they want We're more of me. All the Will Crane people. I only have Here just a little bit to share with you. In personal. That's it. <laughs> you can but, get me at www.paynowatwillcrane.com. <laughs> you know what I noticed today was Chris has got a big dog tackle shirt on. Not just any big dog tackle shirt. It is the annual jig battle hosted by big dog tackle who won that so thing? so who did so <laughs> we we are the reigning champions of the big dog jig battle it is a fun tournament it's not a serious tournament it's it's something that we enjoy there's definitely some bragging rights involved in it um some of the heavy hitters come in um benny ortiz fished it uh squirrel fishes it um, we happen to get uh, Captain Jose Ramon on our boat. So there's some heavy hitters and, and uh, there's an opportunity to definitely um, um, show what you're made of out on the water. And have fun and just be part of this ever growing jigging community that's going on too. So what's the dates? Yeah, um, it is on Saturday. It was just announced. So the third annual jig battle hosted by Big Dog Tackle is gonna be on a Saturday. And it is May, I believe it's May 13th is the Saturday. May 13th, yep, May so 13th. like second week in May. Second week in May. And the good news to that is on May 1st, what happens? Grouper season. Grouper season opens up, baby. So if you guys can, it's a good time to get out on the water. The groupers have had a little reprieve of us, you know, catching and killing them. So um, there's a good chance of you getting a grouper that week. And, you know, may the best angler win. I'll yeah. put a link down in the bio for you guys to sign up. We'll definitely be there and we hope yeah, to see you too. And potentially if you're coming from out of state, get active in Slow Pitch Jigging America, Slow Pitch Jigging North America, Johnny Jigs Fishing. Um, I'd love to try to help anybody find a boat and put together teams uh, to see more people out there jigging in this event. It's gonna be, it's gonna be great. Uh, we're at one of our favorite spots to flay our fish just because we're here. Yeah, we got our goldens, we got our yeah. rosies. And you just never know what's going to happen. Giant bluefin out of Pompano Beach, you guys. Guys, thanks so much for watching. If you've made it this far in the video, we appreciate you watching to the end. Take a look at this giant bluefin being hoisted up. I was so excited to see this thing. You would have thought I caught it myself. Any of the rods and reels and jigs and any of the fishing gear that we've used in this video can be found in the link below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You could also follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We're also putting out a few TikToks here and there. And most importantly, jig on.